My name's Florence Du. I'm currently a resident physician at Mount Sinai West, and I do some research on dynamic digital radiography. Part of the excitement about this technology is that there's a lot of potential application and a lot of potential for the future. And part of it is because we can see things in the thorax that we couldn't see before, also in the muscles and also for therapeutic monitoring. A lot of the projects we're working on are really different than what been possible before, mainly because before you could only see the anatomy. You'd only diagnose things that were on static images. And now you can get a lot of the functional information that just wasn't described in an imaging format. Because before with pulmonary function testing, you could only get a global picture of the lung in a number numerical format with a graph, kind of diagnose and treat things like COPD. But with dynamic digital radiography, you could possibly put that into one single line exam. So that means that you can see the lung disease in a geographic format. You could kind of pre-diagnose things such as COPD and kind of tailor the treatments that way. And that's just one application. It's, it can be very exciting. I would say that that's a, that's a different kind of thought process that would go into the differences between CT or MR. I would say digital radiography is actually different from traditional radiography more, more so than it would be different from CTMR because CTMR is a different second line examination that gives you a different kind of resolution of the lungs. You would get multi-sectional analysis for lung nodules, for example, or high resolution areas to examine thyrotic lung disease. You may not get that immediately because your insurance company might not cover it. It might be due to because that's not the best modality for, per se to access that information. But you do want to get a radiograph as a first line examination to get a picture of what you're looking at. And you would get that in the ED, you would get that as an outpatient, you would get that in a hospital setting. And that's basically what every hospital does. It's the most, it's 40% of all examinations in the world. X-ray is very different in that format because CT and MR is just not accessible for a lot of places in the world. And it just doesn't give you the same picture that dynamic digital radiograph or traditional radiography would do. And you would definitely order those as a more advanced examination. The research is multifaceted. Because dynamic digital radiography has multiple applications, there's different avenues of research we're pursuing. One is because it's so novel, radiologists have not yet been able to develop a new report for it because we don't know exactly what we're seeing. It's very exciting in that it's almost like developing, you know, the first ever radiograph where when you first had to diagnose something, you would say, I think there's pneumonia, and then correlate that with your uh, other clinical colleagues, and they would come back and say, yes, that's a pneumonia, or oh no, that's a lung cancer that's also there. And you would start to developing a differential diagnosis. So in, in that same way, we are looking at the lungs and the way that they're presented in a dynamic format, and we want to see if there's new types of ways of describing those findings. So for example, diaphragmatic motion with one side being more paralyzed than the other side. How do we describe that in a way that makes sense to our colleagues and to our patients? So we need to develop that new way of, just, of writing reports for radiology. The other one is to, again, correlate the lung motion with pulmonary function tests. We want to see if it's possible to accurately diagnose things like COPD, restrictive lung disease, and other types of thoracic diseases that may not have an imaging correlate yet on at least a single first-line examination. Musculoskeletal imaging is definitely one of them. Anything that has a traditional radiograph application might have an application for dynamic digital radiography and beyond because there might be different things again that we can see just because of the nature of the fact that it's a dynamic study versus a static image. I think that most exciting thing is to be able to translate that into clinical practice effectively and safely for everyone and to do that in a way that will be very beneficial to all the patients.